Lesson 5, Creating a Data Flow, Part 2. This lesson is a continuation from the previous one where we're going to go ahead and get into more depth as far as uh, some of the things you can do with the Niagara files and some of the attributes. Specifically, we'll learn how to create new attributes. We'll learn how to access those attributes dynamically through our flows. We'll go over some expression language example. Basically, what we're going to do is um, figure out how to uh, dynamic, how to filter on a uh, directory to get or grab only certain files, and then we'll go into some advanced attribute rule settings. And again, you need to create the two directories. We'll do the send and receive directory like we did before. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off from the previous lesson, and we're going to go ahead and. Um, make a couple of changes here. We have again the receive and the send directory and the two, two other files we're going to use for testing the logback.xml and the readme. Again we have the send it that's going to receive the file, set file name, we'll set the file name and receive it is where the direct where the file is going to be placed. Let's go ahead and modify the set file name. Show you some neat stuff you can do. Uh, first thing we do is just delete the file name. We're not going to name it anymore. And we're going to create another property called type, another attribute. And we're going to give it the name and call it other. Okay, so we created our own attribute that's going to be associated with all the files that come through there. It's going to be called type. The type's the name of the attribute is going to be called type, and the value of that's going to be called other. So just to show you how this works again, we're going to drop the README file in here, and you can see that NiFi picks it up and it moves it over. Okay, just like in the last lesson. Let's go ahead and modify or receive it. And what we're going to do here is we're going to dynamically name the um, write directory. And we're going to give it the name of the attribute we just set, which was called type. And how we're going to do that is we're going to reference the attribute type by doing the dollar sign squir uh, squirrely brace and then type in the word type. And since we set the word, uh, since the variable type to be other, we should have a directory in there called other where our file is going to be deposited. So let's try it again. We'll copy the readme file over. And you can see there's a directory was created for us called other, and inside that other directory is the readme file. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and delete this out of here, clean everything out. Clean all, let's just, I'm going to clear all the, both these directories out. All right, let's try a little, uh, Filtering. Let's go to the uh, directory that we're going to pull st stuff from, and we're going to change this to filter on a certain file name. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to filter for any files that begin with the word log. So this will let us filter, and only the word files that begin with the word log are we going to transfer over. So let's go ahead and start it. And we'll go ahead and drop uh, both files over there. Let's go ahead and give it another name first. We'll say log files so that we know what this describes and what it does. We'll go ahead and start it. And if you see, we drop both files, the README and the log file, into that send directory. You see only one of them gets transferred over, and that'll be the log file. And because we have the other directory still, it's going to be in the other directory. So you can see the log file only is the one that got transferred over. The README file stayed put, again, because we had that filtering in place. All right, let's delete the files out of here again. Try it again. There you go. Just to see again that the filtering worked on just sending the log files over. All right, let's go back and change this so that we'll collect everything now from that directory. Go back to what we originally had. So all the files that get deposited in that send directory will get moved over. I'll just change the name back to what we had it. change it back so that we'll put it in the uh, copy everything or grab everything um, there, let's see, type that in. okay and now we're going to go ahead and change it so that everything gets copied over so let's go ahead and uh, start this up and we'll copy, we'll delete both these files out of here. OK, 
Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to modify this again to um, try and uh, do something called using the advanced tab in this processor. And what the advanced tab will do is let us set some rules and let us define some attributes based upon some certain conditions we're going to set. So the rule we're going to create is uh, we'll call it XML file. You can call it whatever you want. And the expression we're going to use is we're going to filter on files that only have the uh, XML um, name in them. They end in XML. So we're going to take the file name and we're going to go down here and see if it uh, ends with XML for this condition. And if it ends in XML, what we're going to do is set the type variable, which we set before, to other. And we're going to set that to another um, value. So we're going to set the word type. And we're going to give the value of XML. So again, files that come through here that end in XML are going to have the variable, the attribute type set to XML as opposed to other. Let me move this up a little bit so you can see how you got to save this. Hang on. All right, so we got to save this. Again, any in XML, type's going to be set to XML. So let's go ahead and uh, start it. And we'll copy both files over again. But the XML should be sent in an XML directory, and the readme should be set in in other directories. So let's see what happens. So now we have two directories like we expected. In the XML directory, or the other directory, we have the readme file, which is default. In the XML file, we have the logback.xml file. Because it ended in XML, the type attribute got overwritten to be XML. Let's go ahead and delete these out. And we'll do one more thing. We're going to go ahead and, and add a couple more rules. So we hit Advanced. And let's add a couple more rules. Let's see, we'll add an HTML rule. So if the file is in HTML, we're going to set the type to be a certain, uh, very f certain uh, setting. OK, so if the file name ends in HTML, we're going to set the attribute type to be equal to HTML. And let's add another rule if the file is a, uh, ends in PNG. We'll set a rule for that one as well. some PNG and we're going to set the type to be PNG which basically means uh, you saw we're going to set the directory name to be PNG I'll go ahead and save it so XML files HTML files and PNG files you can see that they're going to be set to uh, the different uh, type names so let's go ahead and start it And again, that type variable is what's going to define what directory these files are going to go into. All right, let's go ahead and start it. And in this instance, I'm going to copy over a bunch of files. That are, I'm just going to use something that's in the NIFI directory. Um, and we're going to copy over a bunch of files, maybe about 100 files over of different types. So if we go down to the NIFI directory and look at the docs directory, HTML, See, there's a bunch of different file types there. There's HTML and images types. Let's copy that whole directory over and drop it into the send directory. And let's just watch what happens. There's HTML files in there, PNG files in there, and other types of files in there. So let's copy it over. And you can see what NIFI did. It created, um, it moved all those files over from the send directory and pretty much filtered them into different directories. The HTML files went into the HTML directory. The PNG files went into the PNG directory. Um, and if you look all t up top, it doesn't delete the actual directories um, in the send directory. It leaves the folders there, but they are empty. There's no files in there. All the files got moved over and separated out. So again, HTML directory has all the HTML files. The uh, PNG directory has all the PNG files that were in that um, send directory. Quite a, quite a number of them. 
and then anything that didn't match was called other, and I think in this case it was just a style sheet. Pretty cool. And let's look at the history. You can see again how many files we sent over. You can see there's a big spike there at the end where we actually did the big drop of uh, a bunch of payloads. Um, you can again zoom in on here to see the files that we sent over in the five minute increments. You can see there weren't that many to begin with, maybe five files at a time. Uh, but then when you get, when we dropped the whole directory in, it really skyrocketed up to about 100. So again, the uh, history is kind of neat to see what your uh, traffic's like on your flows. Lesson 5, Recap. Okay, in this lesson we basically continued on from uh, the part 1 where we were modifying attributes and doing funky stuff with uh, attributes. In this case we created a new attribute and we called it type. And we set the value of that attribute to be the actual the word other. And what we did is we referenced that attribute when we did the uh, directory that we were going to send files to. And we basically said send files to the received slash type directory and in this case since type was set to other files we deposited in NiFi were actually sent to the other directory. Uh, we use regular expressions to show how you can do filtering in this case specifically we filtered on files that only started with the word log so any files that started with the word log we transferred over to the receive directory. If you remember we dropped readme and log.xml into the uh, send directory and only the log file got sent over. And then we set over set up some rules for basic um, uh, for the attribute setting for in this case for type. So basically, what we did is a file set ended in XML. We set the the value the attribute type to be XML. Uh, if it's PNG, they set to be PNG. If they ended in HTML, we set the type to be HTML. And then the default, if none of those matched, then we just set the default to be type other. And what we did is, as you saw, is we dropped a whole bunch of files in the send directory with different types of extensions on them. And what NiFi was able to do was recognize the extension and then pretty much just filt or filter or sort out the um, files and put them in specific directories based upon the file extension. So basically all the XML files went into the XML directory, all the PNG files went to the PNG directory, and all the HTML files went to the HTML directory. So we had about 100 files and you saw how fast NiFi was able to do that for us. And again, that was all done by referencing the type attribute that we created. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.silvercloudcomputing.com. There's a NiFi webpage there that has an actual working demo of a NiFi process I put together. It's pretty in-depth. Um, it uses uh, JMS and some FTP stuff uh, processors. So you can go ahead and look at that. And of course, of course if you have any NiFi specific questions, please, please feel free to email me at nifi at silvercloudcomputing.com. Thanks.